Joseph? He should have been here by now. Hey, you guys, guess what? Ta-da! I have a time machine. Wow, are you serious? I love time travel. It's so exciting. Wow, I don't know what to say. That's amazing. Will we really be able to travel in time? Even better than that, time will come to us. But how does it fit in such a small box? It's incredible, isn't it? But, but... That's a DVD player, isn't it? Exactly. With this little gadget, we can watch documentaries about prehistoric people, about ancient Egyptians, and so much other stuff from history. It's like traveling in time. Isn't that incredible? Oh, no. What a letdown. I thought it was a real time machine. Hey, it's the closest thing I could find. On this little screen, we can see how cavemen used to live and, well... Hold on, hold on. Don't you realize it's just a DVD? Well, for the time being, that's all we have. Did you know that we Catholics have a super time machine? Really? Are you sure it's not another DVD player? No. You see, with this super time machine, we can see the most important moment in history. Wow. You mean we can see the day Tony Lamoni won the Pulitzer Prize? <laughs> no, that wasn't the most important moment in history. The biggest moment was when someone invented the wheel. That really changed the course of history. Everything changed from that moment. No, it wasn't. The most important moment in history was when man landed on the moon. I would love to live on the moon. I'd have a little house with flowers, and I'd put a little weather vane on the roof shaped like a rooster. Oh, come on. Don't you know anything about physics? There's no water on the moon or air. You wouldn't be able to breathe or water the plants. Well, the most important moment in history wasn't any of those things. It wasn't? No. The most important moment in history was the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus. That is the real turning point in the history of humanity. Wow. I hadn't thought of that. Jesus died for all people, past, present, and future. Do you want to see? Yes, but this is very sad. It is. Then let's open up the Holy Gospels to the part where Jesus dies, close our eyes, and fly using our imagination. And you at home can come, too. Are you ready? You are? Then let's go! If you close your eyes and give me your hand, we will travel all together to a faraway land. We're gonna learn about Jesus, our way, our truth, and our life. All in the Holy Gospels, which fill us with His light. Bible Stories Wow! We're here on Mount Calvary, where they will crucify Jesus. We really have traveled back in time. Can you see? There's Jesus, and with him are the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. John. 
Christine, is Jesus really suffering for us? Yes, Jesus paid the price for all our sins on the cross for our salvation. When Jesus died on the cross, it was like the clocks in the world stopped. You mean like history stopped? Exactly. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. At the moment Jesus died, it's like the world turned into a giant clock, and all the people who had ever lived were there, because Jesus died for everyone in the whole world. Wow. wow! I didn't know that at all. Well, it's true. And you know what? The Holy Mass is like a time machine to witness the death of Jesus for men. But, but, there's no cross in Mass. Or blood or nails. That's because the death of Jesus is represented, but without these things. So at Mass, we experience Jesus' sacrifice on the cross all over again. Sounds like it. Is that right, Christine? Exactly. You're absolutely right. In Holy Mass, the past comes to the present. We see Jesus redeeming us on the cross. It's the most important moment in history. That's why the very first Christians celebrated Mass with great devotion. Holy Mass was offered in private houses since they didn't have churches then. Also, they did this secretly because they were in danger if the Roman authorities found them. They celebrated Mass in secret? Yes, because the Mass was the center of their faith. It was the most important thing in their lives. Wow, that's awesome. During Mass, Jesus himself becomes present among us, and he renews his sacrifice to redeem us and open the gates of heaven for us. Wow, that's so amazing. It's the best time machine ever invented. Hey, you guys, wait, where's Tassio? I bet he got the date mixed up and he's in ancient Egypt hanging out with one of the pharaohs. Bah. Hey, who's that weird-looking guy? Tassio? Is that you? Why are you dressed up like that? Why are you wearing a disguise? Because you're very scared. Quack, scared. Because you're very, very scared. Poor little thing. He thinks the Romans are going to hurt him. But the Romans don't eat parrots. Nobody eats parrots. It's all right, Tassio. Don't be afraid. If you stay with us, you'll be fine. Of course. You're safe. Come on. Let's go back to the treehouse. That was incredible. We were right there at the most important moment in the history of humanity. I'm going to write all this down so we can put it in the school magazine. At Mass, we show our gratitude to Jesus for redeeming us, and we can thank him when we receive Holy Communion. Okay, that's the first thing I'm going to do when I receive Holy Communion. Say thank you. I believe, Jesus, that you are in the tabernacle, very close to me, in every Catholic church. Thank you, good Jesus, for remaining with us, living with us forever, right by our side. We pray to our Lord in the tabernacle. Hey everybody, we're in the chapel at Sister Lucia's convent and she's going to teach us how to pray before Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, who is right here inside the tabernacle. That's right. As we begin our prayer, we'll make the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Sister Lucia, we learned that the Holy Mass is like a time machine. Yeah, because Jesus' death on the cross is made present to us again and again. By doing this, he suffered the punishment for our sins and opened the gates of heaven to us. Right! We experience everything up close. It's incredible! That's great. It is amazing. Well, the Holy Mass has different parts, and one of them is called the Offertory. I don't know what that is. It's the moment when the priest offers the bread and the wine to God before they become the body and blood of Jesus. Oh, I see. I remember. It's a very beautiful moment when we can also offer our whole life to Jesus. Our whole life? Well, you can start by offering everything you're going to do for the next week. And can I also offer what I'm going to do today? Exactly. It's just like making a morning offering. I don't know how to make a morning offering. How do you do that? Well, you can say a very beautiful prayer that goes like this. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. 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 All of my thoughts. All of my thoughts. All of my words. All of my words. And all of my actions this day. And all of my actions this day. 
I offer to you, O Lord. I offer to you, O Lord. And my whole life for love of you. And my whole life for love of you. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You see? It's easy, isn't it? Yes, it is. I'm going to say that prayer every morning as soon as I get up. Me too. It's really short and easy to learn. You can say it every morning, too. Right. That way you'll be offering Jesus your whole day. Just like we do in Mass. That's right. And you know what? When you say this prayer in the morning, Jesus and all of heaven are listening to your words. Are you serious? Of course. Every time we offer our day to Jesus, He's really happy. He loves us a lot and wants to help us so we can be happy. Wow, that's so awesome. Jesus, I know that you are in the Blessed Sacrament and I want to tell you something super important. I offer you my whole life, everything I do, every single day. That's great, Ava. You can offer it to him again in the offertory during Mass, together with the bread and wine that the priest offers. It's as if you are putting your whole life on the altar. Mother, the church has always taught us the road to heaven, cause this is our goal. All of the saints, all of our traditions are a great treasure that our mother, our mother, our church gives to us. Catholic faith. Hi everyone! Today is Sunday and Father Luis has just finished celebrating the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. He is now going to explain the different parts of the Mass to us. The Mass has different parts? Yes! And Father will also explain what to do during each part? That's right! Do you want to come with us? You do? Come on then! Our moms and dads are inside! Now, everyone, let's imagine that we've already started Mass. And the first thing we say to God is, Lord, have mercy. This means that we're asking Him for forgiveness for everything we've done wrong. Of course. Do you remember? In the Mass, Jesus renews His sacrifice to forgive our sins. So it's good to start by saying sorry. Don't you think so? You see, Jesus once told us a wonderful story. Two men went to the temple to pray a Pharisee and a tax collector. The Pharisee said, I thank you, God, that I am not evil like other men, and especially not like this tax collector here. The Pharisee thought that he was perfect and looked down on the poor tax collector who was standing next to him. The tax collector didn't dare to look up to heaven because he was ashamed of his sins. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Whose prayer do you think was better? It was the tax collector's, of course. And we should do the same. We should all start Mass by acknowledging our sins and asking God for forgiveness. Now this is a very important part of the Mass. We are going to read the Word of God. Sometimes we think we can't hear God because He isn't speaking to us. It's true. I can't hear Him. Well, God speaks to us through the Bible. That's why at the end of each reading we say the Word of the Lord. Wow, that means I can hear God. That's why it's important to pay really close attention to all of the readings during Holy Mass, because they come directly from the mouth of God. Now we come to the offertory. When we do this, we offer God the bread and wine, which will become His body and His blood during the consecration. This is a good moment to offer Him our whole life. Do you remember that beautiful prayer that Sister Lucia taught us? When we say that prayer, we offer Jesus everything we do this day. We can say it during the offertory as well. It's a wonderful thing to do, to put your whole life on the altar and offer it to God, exactly as the priest offers the bread and wine. Here on the altar, we place everything that we do. I can offer my studies. And I can offer the fun I'm having. And now comes the most important part of the Holy Mass, the consecration. 
In this moment, the priest speaks the words spoken by Jesus at the Last Supper, so that this bread and this wine become the Lord's body and blood. Isn't that wonderful? Jesus is present in this church. God is a few meters away from me. I'm so excited. Look, in this moment, we are united with the church in heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. Even though you can't see it, that's what's happening. So now we receive Holy Communion. It's a very special moment because we are going to receive Jesus into our souls. We can tell him how much we love him and ask him to remember the people who need him most. The body of Christ. Amen. Jesus, thank you for letting me receive you. Right now, it's as if there were a halo of light all around me because you are inside me and you are God. Please always take care of me and my family and all the people who need you. Amen. At the end of this program, let's take a moment to reflect on what we learned today and how to change our lives. Through your Catholic Church, dear Jesus, we receive your peace and grace. Walking with our Mother Mary until we see you face to face. Let's review what we have learned. Well, kids, what did you learn today? We learned that the Holy Mass is like a time machine. Right, not like your DVD player. Well, a DVD is like a time machine, too, because you can see things that happened long ago. Okay, but it's not the same, because Mass is real. It's not like a movie. You're right, Enrique. During Mass, we are present at the most important moment in the history of mankind. That's the moment when Jesus died for us to forgive our sins and to open the gates of heaven for us, isn't it? Exactly. During Mass, we are united with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the angels, and the saints. Yes, it's like time just stops. Very good. And what else did you learn? Sister Lucia taught us a prayer for offering Jesus our whole day. Yes, I say it every morning. Do you remember it? Let's all pray together. All of my thoughts, all of my words, and all of my actions this day, I offer to you, O Lord, and my whole life for the love of you. Amen. Perfect. That's the same prayer that I say as soon as I get up. Father Luis, we also learned some of the parts of the Mass. That's fantastic. Who can remember some of the most important ones? Me, me, me. <laughs> okay, Enrique, you tell us. The most important of all is the consecration, because that's when Jesus is made present on the altar. Yes, the bread and wine turn into the body and blood of Jesus. I'm really impressed. You learned a lot today. Jesus, I offer you the day that's just ended, just like I did this morning when I got up. You know, sometimes I don't feel like going to Mass. Please help me to make a sacrifice and go, just as you sacrificed yourself on the cross for all of us. Jesus, please help me never to take Holy Communion for granted, because having you inside me is the most wonderful thing in the world. Thank you, Jesus, for redeeming us and for making yourself present to us in a special way in every Mass. Amen. Every day I want 